Nitro is the glory. Welcome to the No Name RC Podcast with your host tonight, Keenan White, aka Lefty the Great. And if you are unlucky, the Finnish village idiot, JQ. This is the RC Podcast with no name, but plenty of content. So sit back, relax and get ready for some serious bench racing. Yes, indeed. Nitro is the glory, but e-buggy pays the bills. What's going on, everybody? It's an emergency podcast because silly season is so silly. I came out of vacation. I told Joseph, we got to do a podcast. So here we go. Episode 56. What's up, Joseph? How are you? Good. Everything's all right there, Callie Joe, a.k.a. Yeah. Rupert? Yeah, I've been very busy working on so. Why do you sound so Secret weird? Stuff. Are you talking away from the mic? Can you, like, something don't sound right? No, I'm, I'm a bit sick. Yeah, we all know you're sick in the head. But anyway, everybody, uh, Joseph, you're going to have to talk a little bit louder into your mic, please. And I Merry know. Christmas to you guys all. We're recording this. It's December 31st, so Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, I did say we was not going to record, but, you know, silly season just got crazy all over the, uh, like, yesterday. Monday was just like, boom, 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 boom. Announcement after announcement. So before I go on any further, I would like to say thank you to all of our supporters, the No Name RC squad, or No Name RC, uh, sorry, hashtag No Name R N R N N R C squad, all of the supporters, all of the patrons that support on Patreon. Remember, you guys can go to patreon.com forward slash I believe it's the No Name RC Podcast. Um, I believe an NRC podcast. An NRC podcast on the Patreon. We need to get everybody wants these hats too, so we got to get some hats done and some shirts. So I don't know. Let's go. Chop chop. That's your job. You know, you handle all my my uh, small endeavors. Um, I want to shout out to our sponsors real quick before we go on any further. Shout out to RCMX Online, Euro RC, Just RC, No Bullshit, Assault RC, Techno RC. JQ Racing, of course, um, Papa Willie's Traction Tonic. You know what? I actually think you should try some of that Traction Tonic out there in OCRC. I'm going to have to talk to him, see if he can get you some, because you you're doing a lot of 10th gear racing now. You know, you get, soon you're going to get some pink pinion gears, I'm pretty sure. Uh, BK Servos, 454 RC Works, RC Race Works, and Bipolar Designs. Remember, everybody, showing our sponsors some love, shows the podcast some love, all the promo codes will be in the written description. Use them. It helps us. It saves you guys some money. We appreciate all the support. All right, Joseph. So we thought it wasn't going to be a busy, silly season, but things heated up over the weekend. And it's like it just shot its load all over the place yesterday. Like John Holmes in a porn movie. Okay. Sorry. I haven't seen John Holmes. Yeah, it's, it's a little older. Man. I'll trust you. Yeah, he, he was none. Sorry, people. I know that's a little bit disgusting, but it's funny. Um, all right. So, obviously. Well, let's I, start where everyone wants to Of course. To everybody wants to start with. I'll let you take the floor. Well, I thought you were going to introduce this. All right. Well, all about my Padawan and this and that. Well, it's Suicide not. Suicide Watch. Well, you know yeah. what? You introduce it, and I'll talk about we it. We knew that was this was happening over a month ago. I knew this was happening six months ago. I told you about it, but you didn't listen to me. I told yeah. you. A lo- I told you a lot of things. Oh, I knew. I knew. You know, but I can just see his attitude wasn't there. Um, and you know what? I'm probably gonna say some things in this podcast because I am a little bit pissed off. I'm I'm not as pissed off as I was yesterday, even though I knew who this are, was going to happen. Who are we talking about? We're talking about Max. Okay, Maximus Mortimus. You're a Padawan who's been your sidekick for 10 years. I've known him for about two and a half years now. I've traveled with him. Uh, like I said, this wasn't a surprise to us, but it kind of hit home yesterday. I actually woke up yesterday morning. And I was like, man, I haven't seen Max make his decision. I think he's going to just not do it. And then boom, as soon as I had my cup of coffee, there it was. And I was like, fuck. And, you know, it's just, I was pissed, man. I'm pissed, but I really want to say a lot of stuff about Max is my friend. I like him a lot. 
But sometimes you just got to let them go, man. And sometimes you just got to, you know, let them find their own way. So that's kind of how I look at it. But the thing that pisses me off about it the most is that we're very close. It's like that diamond mine meme. You know what I mean? That one guy is like up, like an inch away from striking it rich and he's quitting. And the other guy's coming on like all happy to do it. Well, that's kind of how I feel with Max. Like, So anyway, you talk about it and then we'll, I'll chime in a little bit. Yeah, that's maybe that's that's kind of the same same feeling I have. That okay, so you know maybe switch four years ago, but now like the timing just it feels bad. Okay, knowing everything I know, it's just the timing is is bad for me. But if if I think about this just from my point of view, are you you there still? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, because my my kid's cutting out. So if I think about this situation from my point of view, so the ideal scenario is this. The ideal scenario starts off pretty much like Berton, for example. He was a young kid, raced Kyosho, always raced Kyosho, then he wins the European Championship. That's sort of the ultimate best scenario, right? You have some kid running your brand, and then he becomes good, and he wins something. Now... Even that didn't end perfectly because after he wins, he switches. Now, some advice for kids who have sponsors, race with them for a long time, then get some success. If you want to pay back your sponsors, yes, it's nice to win something and that's it. But the the most value is actually the year after you do that. So in Berton's case, for example, he wins the Euros. Then this coming year is when Kyosho would sort of reap the rewards in a sense. They got the championship and they got the champion for the year. People want to see him race. People are interested because he's the reigning champion sort of thing. So a perfect scenario would be you have a kid, you support the kid, he becomes good, he wins something, he stays, and you reap the rewards after that. Do you see what I mean? That's that's sort of the dream scenario. Yeah, it's kind of like what happened with Nemo and the Killets. Killets yeah, this sa- year. Yeah, same well. thing. So, so there's three stages. There's there's the the first stage that that I ended up being with, where I support Max. He doesn't really break through. I mean, he's good. He has potential, but he he didn't get that like big result, right? I mean, it the biggest result. Before, it, it the biggest result he got that. was DNC Open Class win. Yes, yes. There are some good, and, and good the junior results, yes, junior race at the Euros. Yeah, but he's not like on a podium at the Euros. Or no, but he Euros was very close. Worlds. He was Do you very see close. What I mean? You know, he has he has shown that he has the potential for that. But, hold but on. He didn't quite achieve it, and it ended. And let's be that's like, let's be that's correct. The first stage. Let's be. Let's just shed the light on that situation too because the reason he didn't make it to finals in that Euros is because he ran out of gas. Who ran him out of gas? All right. I'm not even going to say who ran him out of gas. We know. He was there. I even saw the pit stop and I was like, he didn't get a full tank. And I wasn't even there. I was watching the video. That wasn't even the semifinal. So I was no need to talk about that. It was one. It was the Neo buggy, man. Shut up and let me. No, I'm not shut up. Yeah. I I have some deep thoughts here I need to get out. You're interrupting my flow. You do that to me all the time. You don't have flow. (laughs) So anyway, so that's that's like the first stage. The second stage is where Kilik or Berton was. So they start off as kids, they get support, and then they achieve some success and immediately switch. So it's like a bittersweet feeling as a manufacturer. You help them all this way, they made it, but then they switch. So... Yes, it's good because you, you had that journey together. You helped them and they achieved something. But you don't sort of get, you don't really get paid back for it. So the best scenario is some something like, I, I mean, I don't know, someone like uh, Mayfield, for example. Or even I some- think when Mayfield was just, you know, when he, he was just a privateer buying Associated Card, I think. Had some good results, became sponsored, stuck with Associated for many years, many, many years, and had a good career. And that's a good scenario. So, well, 
in in their case, they they weren't even really sort of focusing on him. He he just became good on his own. But you get the point. Like mm-hmm. whatever brand you come up with, do well with, you get support, you stay with them. That's that's the scenario everyone wants. Okay, so let's look at this situation with Max. Am I mad? No. Are, are we still friends? Yes. Uh, am I disappointed? Yes, of course. But here's let's be realistic. He isn't good enough to be a European champion or a world champion now. Can he be in the future? I think he can, yes. Would I have liked to see that happen with a JQ car? Yes, I would. Would, it, would I be happy if he achieved that with some other car? Yes, I would. So I think he, he can never be an Ongaro. I think that's already, that's already been proven because to be that, you have to be really talented. But he can be someone like, uh, let's say, Martin Bayer, for example, like double European champion, you know, finished, I think, second or third at eight scale Euros. You know, someone who on a good day when everything's good can, can beat the best or, or race the best but then can also end up in the quarterfinal. You know, that's someone who has some talent, but builds skill through practice and dedication. And when everything is right, can get good results. And when things are, aren't quite right, can't be up there. See, someone, a talent like Ongaro or Mayfield, even when things aren't going right, they're still up there. So, so that's sort of the difference. That's where I see him. Now, where does his, where does his trip trajectory go now like does he keep on improving or does he stay the same or does he sort of fade away that's up to him that's up to the decisions he makes i think he has the potential to win big races in his future but that's up to him how, how bad he wants it and then to explain why this happened i think the best way to explain it would be this and I think every single man can understand this explanation. I think women are different, but probably we, maybe women can understand this too. I think you're going to like this explanation. So, okay. if imagine you're a virgin. Imagine you're just a nerdy virgin in a field playing with toy cars. You meet a girl. You lose your virginity with this girl fall in love, becomes your girlfriend. You stay together for 10 years. I guarantee you that the time will come when this man starts wondering what other vaginas are like. What are other women like? Whatever his girlfriend is, he starts wondering about other types of women. Dark-haired women, Latin women, black women, white women, tall women, short women, whatever it is. Like he sees a beautiful woman somewhere. Like I wonder what it would be like to be with her. That's natural. I think it's a fact. Like most men cheat. It's it's just it just happens, and they cheat because they're curious. They get bored with what they have, even if it's great. But they're curious about what something different's like. I think the only way you will end up in a relationship where a man doesn't cheat is when he has experience. He's been there, done that, tried everything. He knows. Okay, how does this this relate to Max? Well, Max was a virgin, an RC virgin, when he joined JQ Racing. He was, what, seven, eight years old? Never raced eight scale. He started racing. The first eight scale he raced was a JQ prototype. And then he's run every JQ car since then. So for 10 years, the only eight-scale buggy he's raced is a JQ car. So the fact that he wants to switch doesn't mean that the JQ car isn't good enough or that my support isn't good enough or that I'm an asshole. It just means that he's curious. He wants to know what's out there. He feels just like that man would feel after 10 years and only having ever been with one woman. He's, he's wondering, what is that uh, hot Latin girl like? What's that black girl like? What's that tall girl like? What's that girl like with the big boobs? Yeah, I can see you that. Know? I, it's kind of also that's, like... That's what's going on. I Perfectly natural, normal. So I kind of thought of it a different I way. Think it's, um, I, but think, similar. I think it's expected. 
Yeah, and I don't, I don't hate Max. I'm, I'm very pissed. I'm disappointed. I am. I'm trying not to show it, but I'm disappointed. And I, you know, it's just like, man, fuck. But you know, life goes on. So does everything else. I wish him all the best. I'm pissed off he didn't say thank you to me in his video, though. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to tell him off about that. And um, now he needs to make another one. Yes, I, I think he should just make one de dedicated to me. That would be great. Me and my kill. But I think about all yeah. the people that have put effort into him as well, and an entire team that that looked to him. That's who I think about. As yeah, well, let's see. and I think he never. This you now let me talk a little bit. I think he never fully embraced that. I don't think he even wanted to embrace that because, like Max is very shy. I think like he's very outgoing, but I think he's very shy as well. That's why he's wearing the hoodie, even when it's a hundred degrees out. He's got a hoodie on, covering up half his face. You know, he doesn't like to look at people in the eyes, and I, I don't know what that is. Maybe he's a little bit introverted. I don't know, but I happen to think Max is a very intelligent young man. I think, I. I think he can still have a bright future in RC. Maybe not as a, a racer per se, but definitely in design because he knows a lot of stuff. And the, the, the amount of information and, and education you put into him is impressive. Like, he knows his shit, you know? He knows a lot, of a lot of stuff, you know, probably doesn't know as much as you, but he knows and he, and he understands geography and, and the physics and all that type of stuff. Super smart. I think, I don't know, man. I think, I get it. It's like, I, I put it like this. It's like when a guy, like he got a little taste. He, he went out and, and tried some different cars. We, we all know that. He tried the AE car and all that stuff earlier this year. Can you stop doing that, please? It's very rude. No. It is because actually people that listen to podcasts always say, can Joseph can stop doing that because it clanks and makes a lot of noise. So he got a little taste. It's, it's, like, it's like when a man or a woman cheat in a relationship. The relationship's never going to be the same, no matter how much you try. So he has to go out and discover things on his own. And I hope he does. I mean, I really hope he does come back at some point. But honestly, I feel, I don't think he's even, from what he told me, he says, I'm not motivated anymore. I think this change will help motivate me. I don't know if it's just bullshit me and just saying, I want to try a different car. I don't give a fuck. When he don't have to, he could just say, I just want to do a try to something different. But I'll tell you what, at RCGP, he didn't look like he wanted to be there. And he just it was just a different vibe, you know? And from when he was in D at DNC the year before. Even at PMB this year, I was like, when he didn't want to run Truggy, and I'm like, dude, you got 35 people up here, 30, almost 40 people here, and you're the fastest guy here. You run every class. You want to be a pro racer? You run every class. You don't see Mayfield crying about running three classes. You don't see Joseph crying about running three classes. Don't run it for you. Run it for these guys who came to support your company and all that stuff. And he wouldn't do it. And, you know, we had our, you and I had our discussions over the last year. And I, I voiced my opinions on Max. But you didn't listen to me. But you then started to listen to me. But, you know, it is what it is. I feel kind of bad because... I looked on the live RC announcement and it was the most pop, even though people said, we don't know who he is. He, it was the most popular one that they made. And he got a kind of a bad rap. Some guy talking about him drinking and all this type of stuff. And then that, you, oh, I think that's ex unexpected because he is linked to me. Yeah. You know, but anything that I'm involved in gets. Yeah. But we know that one, the, the, light. the one person that was making all those comments, we know who he, we can't prove it, but we know who he is. He's Norwegian, but, um, we know who Aven he is. Espinesse. Huh? Oh, you Aven can say. Espinesse. He's just a hater. Oh, he, no, he <laughs> extremely hates you. Um, he'll probably now try and get this podcast man that we said this. But stop that, man, dude. That's loud in the microphone. Stop it. Seriously. Jesus. It is very loud. It's very irritating. Stop it and pay attention. But anyway, I'm not pissed off at Max. I'm disappointed. I wish him all the best. I know he has army. He said he's looking at probably going to school. I know he's been working full time the last six, seven months too. So maybe he got a little taste of making some some money, you know, as well. Um, my opinion, I think he's going to be out of RC by the end of 2020. Or he'll just yeah, do it for fun. Because he's like, oh, I'm just going to race in Finland. 
and I don't really want to travel much. Maybe I'll do the Euros. I'm like, man, if you're not motivated, you're not motivated. But there will come a part time in life where you might say, man, that was probably where I made a mistake. He might not ever do that. He might not ever feel that. But he might go off and become a world champion. Who knows? But you know what? I wish him all the best. He's still my friend. Yes, I am pissed off at him. I told him I'm going to tell him how I feel on the podcast. So don't get upset, Max. I told him, you know, I am upset. Because, man, we're so close. So close. So close. And he's a big part of it. And when we, when, when we do, when we are successful, I want him to be there. Like, you know what I mean? So, anyway, man. Good luck to Max. I feel bad. For the, I feel bad about, like, how some people talked about him and that, that live RC thing. And that was so stupid. Like, his dad came on and said something. But, and, you know, I almost said something. But I then, say, I then said to myself, you know what? That's not my problem anymore. And, you know, that's just how it is. Like, I don't think it matters to him what they say. They don't even know him, none of these people. So, good luck to Max. And, yeah, I feel, I actually feel bad for you. As much of an asshole that you are, and you act like you're all hard and nothing really fazed you, I know this fazed you. I know you're disappointed because you spent 10 years of time, effort, and money putting into Max. You know, I know, like, I know, like, I know his dad worked for you for a little bit, like, for a while. That stopped, what, eight years or something, you know, shipping out stuff and helped you out. And I think, like, Max is like your little brother. Like, I look at Max as like a little brother. Like, I enjoy traveling with him to these races. Like, NNC was so epic. You know, we shared that moment. It was so fun. And, and you know, I wanted to do that more. He had a very ugh, uh, meh year. This year, like, he did not live up to expectations at all. I watched him at RCGP. I watched him at RCGP hit the same jump in the same spot and donkey flip every time. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> like, he did it three laps in a row. He hit the same spot, and he donkey flipped and went all over the place. And I'm just like, what the hell? Like, don't jump right there. Like, And he just kept doing it. And I was like, he don't care. Like, you know, he just didn't want to be there. And... It's unfortunate because you know why, Joseph? There's lots of peep kids and lots of people out there that would kill to have an opportunity like that because he was pretty much a factory driver. Okay, he wasn't getting a salary, but he got everything free and he got trips paid for, I believe, or whatever. And there's, yeah. there's people out there that would kill for that opportunity. I love to have that opportunity. He had it. And... You gave that to him and you put a lot, and you've had this happen to you before. You know, you've had young guys that have done well with you, they left you. And I totally understand why you kind of have this attitude about, I'm tired of putting time and, and money into people. I'm kind of at that point too. I'm not putting money into people, but I'm putting a lot of passion into people. But I have to keep telling myself, I can't let it get me down. It does, but I have to get over it. So enough about that. Adios, Max. Good luck, buddy. It was a great video, by the way, but it didn't say thank you. Yeah, that was cool. He did not say thank you to me, so it isn't that great. And <laughs> I'm going to tell him off about that, but I really do wish him the best, man. I really, I love Max, man, like a little brother. Yes, he pissed me off. I want to kill him at PMB, but, and he's smart and he's rude sometimes, and I want to punch him in his face, but I like him. <laughs> I like him a lot. That sounds like a healthy relationship. Oh, that's what little brothers like are. You. That's like little, that little brothers are just that you just want to kill him. But if somebody touched him, you'll kill him. That's how I feel. Like, you know what I mean? No, I have, I want to kill him. No, you aren't allowed to. No, I but I want to, like, it's like, you're like my little brother, too. Like, I know you don't feel like it, but I'm older than you. And, like, I'm not going to let you get beat up. I'm going to let you get slapped a few times because you deserve that. Probably do because you said something <laughs> smart. But I'm not going to let that person beat you up, you know? So it is what it is. man. You know what, man? JQ Racing, we'll move on. We got, we got a couple of young, fast guys. And uh, I guess, like, a lot of people have questions about what RCGP is going to be, all that type of stuff. Let's, let's continue and talk about some more of the silly season, move, silly season moves, and then we'll touch on some of these questions. Um, okay. So, as we talked about in the, in the podcast before, it's like, I, you know what aggravates me is that we talked about... Uh, Ricardo Berton leaving Kyosho and Savoya leaving TLR two weeks ago. 
And then Live RC posts, and everybody's like, oh no, look at that. I'm like, we said this two weeks ago. Literally. Like, listen, people, like, I'm not bullshitting you. Here's the fucking date of the podcast when we said this. Like, so I got it. A lot of people don't probably don't listen to our podcast, but you should listen to our podcast. You kind of, sometimes we actually know what we're talking about. So, Berton is out. Savoya's officially gone. Um, a few additions have added to that. Tyler Jones has left TLR, which I was shocked because we thought he's going to stay at TLR. Brandon Rose has left Serpent, which I'm not too, too surprised about it. I know he wants to go to a, a team. who He's very talented, but he has a problem finishing races. Um, so he needs he's that going, team. Is so, he going HB? No, I think he's going to Adama. I think it's only a natural fit. He might go HB, but everybody and their mother has gone to HB this last two months. Man, HB just went nuts. They have like taken over the entire south and northeast of America. They literally, I think they, one guy was telling me in Texas alone, they sponsored 22 guys that race at Indy RC. How many? 22 people. That's good. Well, that's, you, uh, well, before, we all, let's touch on that too, because that created a big stink. So that made that mean that I showed you about that old lady hiding a knife behind her back and calling the cat and saying HB deals. And then, well, <laughs> what it was, was I think it was a rabbit. <laughs> was I don't know. Rabbit? It was a cat. <laughs> what it was, anyway, was I think it's funny because, you know, in the RC, I always talk about in the RC. It's a very, it's a very healthy club racing scene. Alex Morelli and his father Tej run it. And I think, I don't know if, I don't know if it was Alex or somebody made that meme or Alex posted and man, it started a shit storm. And he was upset. He said, you know, we really uh, promoted HB. We carried HB here in the shop. And now they've gone and sponsored everybody in the whole area and put them oh, on the team. they were selling HB yeah, in the shop. Right? So now they can't sell anything. Yeah, so he's, he's, a little okay. bit, he's a little bit pissed off at that. And I get his point. I honestly do. I do. And it's funny because even a, a guy that was like pure HB for the last two years has been all HB. He got so pissed off. He stopped running HB and went to Agama because of what HB done. And this was like one of the early guys. He was HB Nation. His crew was named Francis. He makes me laugh. I met him a few times. He is vicious. And he just stopped running HB because of that. Yeah. And then I had... See, this is the thing. Like, we keep, uh, we keep killing ourselves. But you know what, Joseph? You know what, Joseph? I see a lot of people are mad at HB and all that type of stuff. And you know what? I don't blame them. I understand, but so in this situation, the thing is still that there are so many brands that that shop, it's not like the shop's going to die, you know? That's, that's Some people are saying that. No, the shop just needs to pick another brand. So in the, I, th I feel like in these situations, the hobby shops, when this sort of thing happened, just Pick a brand that doesn't do that, or pick a brand and make a deal. Yeah, so but if you got stock in, imagine if you area, got, you know, if you got stock but, in there and kits and yeah, parts, of course. And also, you know, if it's selling good, it's popular, then yeah, that's. I think I still and think they'll sell are parts there. A, you, you are going to take a hit, and uh, even if you switched brands, then that kind of has to be built up in the area. And well, everyone's already sponsored in the area, so who's going to be buying stuff? You know, yeah, I understand it's a problem. Yeah. And it started a whole big mess on, on Facebook. And it's funny because I saw some people in there that kind of bitched and complained about when we did our little North Carolina's push a couple years ago when I first got started. And we sponsored a whole bunch of people. And I get what the hobby shop is saying. I truly do. I truly do. But I also understand, like, hey, man, HP has a very good product. They have two great drivers. I mean, Ron Fox is one of the best in the world. He's super, like, super helpful. He's on social media. Cole's game has picked up a lot in the last year. And the, the car is good. So people want to be a part of that. But, I mean, they did sponsor a lot of people. But it's the nature of, it's just the way it is. And it is what it is, man, at the end of the day. Is it right? Eh, I don't know. I can't say that. I haven't sponsored a bunch of people in one area. So, you know, anyway. HB has picked up a lot of people, dude. There's a lot of HB cars out there right now. And you know what? I don't blame them. 
feel bad for some of the, for Indy and those guys, but I don't blame them at all. Um, all right, so we talked about so silly season. Yes, who's who's going where? Okay, well, I just checked online, and Fend has dropped AKA, and he's going to J Concepts. It looks like because J Concepts just posted a article get to know Fend. So Fend to J oh, Concepts. Now here's my okay. thing. Fend is was is fast. Tires aren't hurling him back. Tires are not his issue. Because he obviously done well on AKA. I mean, he does good on 10 scale. His issue is he needs a mechanic to make sure his car finishes eight scale races. Yeah, if if the announcement was that Fend was changing his mechanic, then that would be a good a good one for him, I think. I don't I don't see well. I think he'll do just the same, basically. If that's what's happening, if he left AKA for J Concepts, well, his I, results aren't going to change. Yeah, he's he was he was fast. I don't think tires was his issue. I think Jay's Concepts is paying him well, and you know what? He he'll he'll probably be just as fast, maybe a little bit faster. He'll have much. No, I guess he'll have much more to choose from in, in ten scale. That's for sure. And eight scale. I haven't seen seen this news. I, I, I just showed up. It, so people are messaging so this, me, and I knew about this, this two days ago. This is why Cavallari. Got let go. Yeah, we thought it was going to make room for Angaro, but I guess Fen leaving makes more mo- gets more money for Angaro. So what? Oh yeah, for, yeah. for AKA. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And true, true. And then, okay, so we, we we know about Savoya left. I still think he's going to Kyosho. I asked Mick Craddock. He says like, he doesn't know. Of course he knows, but he can't tell me. Um, I think that's only a natural fit for him. Berton, like, oh, yeah. it, sorry, go ahead. Kyosho lost Berton and Kyosho Europe is in France. Yeah. So it, it makes sense. They need someone. Savoya could be that guy. Savoya could work for them. Savoya could do sales for them, customer service, support, whatever, you know. So it would kind of be a natural fit, be a racer and have a job there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think he could end his career doing, doing that, like, and then just go into a, you know, probably not race as much, but just do, you know, but yeah, Mick Craddock, yeah. but in France. Mm-hmm. Um, now, the other big thing was people were messaging me yesterday talking about Infinity's done, they're out of RC, they got rid of Mark Reinhardt and some other guy. We even heard, heard have heard rumbles. You say it's true. I heard them too, that, that Lee's out of Infinity. Um, yeah, so they, they got rid of four drivers. Yeah, who three, did they get rid of? Three Reinhardt? on-road, one off-road. Mm-hmm. So Reinhardt, Prunta... Alberto Pico and and uh, Lee Martin. Mm-hmm. I'm shocked that they got so rid of Lee. I don't really know. I don't know why. So because, well, we all know it. with Infinity, money isn't an issue. Not money an issue. Isn't. He's if, like if a they billionaire. Say that, if they if they say that it's because of budgets or this, that's an excuse. It's a smokescreen. That's not true. So they could. I mean. They probably have spent a hundred grand on one race, you know, with a team, hotels, yeah. dinners, flights. Like the worlds this year, the eight scale. Yeah, worlds. yeah. I mean, I would not be surprised if they have spent a hundred thousand US dollars on just one event with uh, their team and their expenses. I know at uh, 2016 Worlds, they went out in Vegas, and I know some people that were with them, and they spent. Ten thousand dollars on a booth at one of the clubs. I think it was Hakkasan, some live show, something like ten grand on a booth, right? And then their time ended, and then they just spent another ten grand to continue partying. So tw- that's twenty grand plus whatever other Man, drinks we, and things. We that need to they get did. in with Infinity. I. Yeah. But uh, I'm just saying this to illustrate the point that they are not, you know trimming the fat because they need to save money. Like, I, that's not the reason. You, you think know? maybe this guy just got tired so, of him? So there's, well, actually, I take that back in a sense. When you have a lot of money, it's not, it's not like you just throw it away for whatever. You have mm-hmm. to sort of believe in what you're doing. You have right. to want to do it. So, so just that you have it doesn't mean that you can just spend it. So, Yes, in that sense, it can be money. It can be like, hey, you know, I don't want to, you know, cut these checks for 
for this much. Like, I prefer this number. Okay, so it can be the money. But what I'm saying is there has to be some other reason why these guys got, got cut. You know, maybe maybe they didn't, maybe the owner just didn't get along with them. Maybe. Or he didn't like them or whatever. There's some reason. There's some, but it's not like, or we have to save money because we're struggling sort of thing. Like, had he had these guys been the favorites of this guy, best friends, this wouldn't have happened. Mm-hmm. He would have just paid for it and continued. So there's something else going on that we don't know about. So that's why they're well, out. I don't that's think Infinity's done. Are out. I don't think Infinity's no, done with RC. Not, not done. I was no. trying to tell somebody, I was like, you do know that the owner of Infinity has more money than any other company in RC, right? You do know that, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's not so about money. I think, I think okay, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, so I, I think that the Lee the Lee Martin one makes sense because they by all accounts it seems like Berton is going to infinity. So then they have Berton in Italy and McBride in Australia. They have a two man RCGP team. They also said they were joining RCGP. So they have two eight scale drivers. They don't have an eight scale buggy. So why should they have a third driver? You know, it doesn't make sense. So, yeah, I can I can understand that. Now that someone like Reinhard, I don't really understand that because he was still doing well. Did he win I mean, a world championship the, this year? I think, no, I think he was actually doing the best out of the electric 10-scale touring car drivers. So, for sure, there's some other reason there. It's not results. It's not money. There's some, some personal reason, something. So, that's Where do you why. think Reinhard ends up? I don't know. I heard he's working with his brother now. His brother has a you know shop distribution of RC stuff, so he's working there. He'll he'll run whatever car he wants for now. Maybe he'll get a deal with someone. Maybe not. Mm-hmm. Maybe he'll just run for his brother Tony Sport and and race what he wants. I don't, I don't know. What about Lee? What are you hearing about him? I am I haven't heard anything, but. I think the most natural fit would be Nemo Racing because Nemo is doing Yokomo in the UK and Lee runs Yokomo. Lee has run the Gama, you know, sort of. Yes, for a I while. I believe as a favor, a favor, you know. But maybe it will be more official now. Maybe he'll be like all full Nemo Racing now. But they don't really have a. I don't know. They don't really have a top. I mean, with the Kiliches gone, they don't have a, a veteran. Uh, yeah. A he, veteran. He has a spot there. Yeah, eight scale driver, and. Yokomo is probably still giving him a good paycheck, and he doesn't, you know, maybe he gets. Yeah, yeah. but the Yokomo thing, I, He's the still... Yokomo thing is is something that I wouldn't deem as secure. No, of so course not. From what I've heard, you know, Yokomo got into financial trouble. There was a group of investors that came in and took over the company, and the RC side, the sort of professional race RC racing side that's something that could potentially be cut in the future that that's sort of what I've gathered of the situation it Mm -hmm. started off seeming like oh nothing's going to change and then then it got to where well you know we're going to cut these budgets here and there and yeah so I wouldn't be surprised if the racing side is uh, something that loses their money I wouldn't be surprised if they look at it and be like Kind of like Tamiya or someone like, you know what, this, this doesn't make any sense. We don't want to pay these guys. So I wouldn't I wouldn't think of the Yokomo deal as being super secure, like like an X-ray thing or something like that. Well, I know it would be great to see if Berton goes to Infinity and Infinity is committed to putting a team and it would be great to see him racing in all realms of the RCGP next year. Oh, really that good. would be good, yeah. yeah. So, very talented. He's very talented. So, where, where does Kyosho stand now? They're going to get Savoya. They have Jao. They have CJ Jalen. And, all right, st- they still kind of, Cody's still there. You know, who knows how long he's going to be active racing, whatever. But I see he's putting in an effort to race. I, I've already s- expressed my feelings about him on this podcast before. Well, whatever. I don't, I'm, not, I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to get into that. What does Kyosho do now? That Savoya, what Savoya, 32 now, 33? 34, maybe? I can't remember how old he is. Is Polito still running Kyosho? Mm-hmm. 
I don't remember. Probably because I think Ravaglia went to S Works, and another fast Italian went to S Works. I can't remember. But yeah, Polito, he's another great talent. You know, he's very yeah, he's fast. good. If he's if he's on Kyosho, then yeah, that's the uh, sort of fast European. Well, Yao is faster than him. Yao. Oh yeah, sorry. Well, he's still there. And so let's Savoia isn't slow. He was yeah, eight. They'll, they'll still be okay. His they'll TLRs three, three top three top guys in. Europe, and it looks like CJ Jelen's kind of getting the hang of things now. He seems to be getting a little better results. Yeah. So CJ's good. And they still have good drivers. And you know what? I'm not even going to say it, but if, if Cody Kane can keep his act straight, he can still go fast. What do you mean you're not even going to say it? You just said it. I know, but you know, I wasn't going to say what I really wanted to say. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. Let's analyze this Tyler Jones. And Brandon Rody. Brandon Rose, sorry, I'm calling him Rody. No, Brandon Rose, very fast. Young, 15 years old, super fast. Biggest issue, can never finish a race. He, he just, he's super fast, super talented. We know the Serpent car is good, but ever since Paul Sicarello has left Serpent, Serpent's team is just diminished. I even just saw that uh, Adam Johnson's left Serpent. So, like, Paul Sicarello was the glue that kept kept Serpent together. He was a great team manager, a great guy, knew what he was doing. Uh, Brandon Rose doesn't have that. That he Brandon Rose needs a mechanic. He needs a team, a support, keep his car together so he can finish races. I think it's only a natural fit that he goes to a Gama. It's, I think it's either a Gama, HB, or S-Works. But I, I think it's either a Gama or S-Works. Billy's in Texas. They know each other. They all go to the same, a lot of the same races. And I must say, Agama has made a really big, really big strides this year, which I, you said they wasn't, but they did. You know, have, having lots, the car is good. They have PR and all. So, you know. They well, have they tendency. haven't really. I mean, you don't go to races and see a bunch of Agama. Well, I think you're going to see more of that this year. Yeah. Next year. Yeah, we'll see. Um, Tyler Jones is a big, so I, I think Brandon is going to go Agama or HB. His, his good friend Dylan races HB. They're always hanging out together, so it's a possibility. HB has a big team. He'll get all the support that he needs there, but as well as Agama. But I kind of feel it's Agama because he said something in a live RC uh, interview today, and he said it's one of he's gonna his teammates gonna be one of the most pop is the most popular pro in RC. So I think it's Ryan Lutz, and I think it's Agama. It's just a natural fit. Tyler Jones is a little bit of a conundrum because oh, let's be real, we tried to get Tyler Jones. We really put an effort in to get him. Um, at one point, I thought we might get him. But he didn't. And my suspicion is S-Works for him. I have no idea. But then again, I saw that Serpent is going to announce a factory driver. So I don't know. I don't know. It's interesting. We thought that a silly season that wasn't going to be so good has turned out to actually be good. Maybe not with the bigger names that we thought it would be, but it's still good. I'm going to make a prediction. Okay. Next year will be a silly season that involves big names. Well, that's not hard. Two, two reasons. It's after the world, so the coming year is not a worlds yeah of course so you know who does well who doesn't do well at the worlds that's not and really. also i think that cavalieri was the first sort of sign of this happening cavalieri is on a few last chances do you think in a sense yes because he's a top paid pro driver um he didn't have he he got cut by yokomo he didn't really have options S Works was the only place I think he could have gone and got the deal he wanted. He could have maybe landed at TLR, but the deal wouldn't have been what he expects and what he wants. Are we, look, are we witnessing gone, the end? Gone to Serpent, but he couldn't have got the deal he wants. Okay, mm -hmm. he gets cut by J Concepts. He can't get a deal with a top brand that he wants. I know where he's going, so I can't really say it because, well, I didn't ask, hey, can I say this on the podcast? He just told me. So I'm not going to say where he's going, but 
Is it, so I mean, oh, you mean for tires? It's not going to be pro. Yeah, it's not going to be Proline or AK. So it's just that had it not been for this company, mm. I don't even know if he could have got the deal where he gets paid the kind of money where it's even acceptable to him. That's shocking. You know, so I feel I feel that like some of like him for an eight scale and ten scale deal for a tire deal, like a paid deal with a reputable company, he's on like the last. He's Straw. clutching at straws. Yeah. Are we going to see... Frank Cavallari. So imagine this situation. Im- just imagine this situation where there would be three top guys looking for a deal and that they can't find. Like, someone has to be left out. The only reason we've been going for this these years is because these millionaire and billionaire and just sort of rich enough outside RC and putting in money like a tax plan into RC and spending it in RC, companies like Infinity, Maxima, S-Works, these sorts of companies, it's only thanks to them that we are in this situation where these paid drivers still get paid to do what they do because we can't find an engineer, boom, Maxima jumps in and suddenly, they have, think about it, Maxima mm-hmm. are paying Tebow, Rivkin, Mayfield, Cavallari, uh, Robert, Badier, um, yeah, Neumann, yeah, six six drivers. Is that it? Do they have anyone else? They're paying all those six drivers. If Maxima decided tomorrow that they're going to quit making engines, and they don't, I don't think that those six guys would find paying play OS. No, no. Okay, so they can't run an OS Ultimate Racing. No, uh, Bullet. No. Who's left? Like, who would pick these guys up? Who could afford they to would pick not, them up? They would, Nobody. all six guys would not get a paid engine deal. Okay, then you look, okay, in on road it's more obvious, but you look, you look in off road and we have Infinity and S Works. Both of these companies. Are not run, they're not run in a way that it's sustainable. Like we make money from RC and we spend money in RC and it's a profitable business. No. So now Infinity only have the two drivers. So that's fine. They aren't sort of, they wouldn't, you know, disrupt the flow of things really. If, if but something they did changed in there. on-road though. S-work, yeah, in on-road they do. But S-Works, if you look at that, it's not a sustainable system. Like this isn't going to last. I don't, I think next year someone is out at S-Works. The reason is they have Cavallari, Connors, Cavallari, Connors, and Boots that mm-hmm. they pay. And then 100% free, I mean, guaranteed 100% free, maybe something on, on top of that, like travel and stuff. They have what? Valente, Widmeyer, um, Pelicom, Neumann, um, works. Norman, yeah, Neumann. Uh, they just got Ravaglia. They got um, Ravaglia, probably 100% free. You know, like they like, have all these guys that are costing them money. Mm-hmm. That's not that's not sustainable. They aren't they aren't big enough to do that. If you look, what's sustainable in RC, look at Mugen or maybe HB. So HB have two pay drivers, Ronnefark and Ogden. Um, Mugen have well Drake doesn't count because he works he works there. So Mugen have uh, Mayfield and Robert. Mm-hmm. That's it. You know that's what an RC company can do. That's what sort of makes sense for an RC company. So I expect S-Works to change something up. They, I, don't, I don't see them keeping Boots, Kranas, and Cavallari in 2021. I don't either because they can't even decide which one's going to run RCGP races. You know, which two? Like, okay, Kranas ran every It's race. It's just like the you law know? of diminishing returns. You know, you, you don't have any drivers and you get one. And it's a huge boost. Mm-hmm. It's cra- like if JQ Racing now signed Ryan Mayfield, it would be just incredible. We would sell a shit ton more, guaranteed, because we have a good product. We have a good brand that people care about. We have good marketing promotion, team atmosphere. Oh, now we have a big name. We, have, we gain credibility. We have good results. We sell more. Okay, so it's, that's a big boost. Then we get a European top guy. We sign... Robert Batier in Spain. Wow, dude. Suddenly we have sales in Spain and Portugal and Italy, and he's doing all the Southern European races. We have most uh, sales in France. Like, wow, that was a big deal too. After that, 
if we sign, let's say we sign Rivkin or we sign um, Ronnefark, we're not going to see a change, really. It's not going to affect us. We're spending a shit ton of money, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but we don't get that same return anymore. I think... So it's if you have more than that as paid drivers, it's because of ego or you just have money to spend. It's not a biz- business decision. It's not a business move. You aren't looking and counting your beans and being like, yeah, it makes sense. Let's sign this guy. Like, it makes zero sense for someone like S-Works financially to have all the drivers they have. It doesn't make sense. And they will realize this. They will see that, well, that didn't really fucking move the needle. So they're going to cut that. And when the time comes that Maxima, the guy is really old, that's passionate about RC, let's say he passes away, I don't think his son is going to continue it. His son isn't really into it. He's going to be like, fuck that. I'm not going to spend like, hundreds of thousands of dollars on this RC crap, you know? Done. No more Maxima drivers. One day, Kenji, Infinity is going to wake up. He's going to be like, find a new hobby or whatever. He's not really into it anymore. Infinity, it's a brand. It exists. So, you know, what's going to happen? Like, is someone going to buy it? Whatever happens, it, Infinity will become something that needs to be self-sustainable. Yes. You know? And, yes. yeah, so a ton of drivers are going to get, get cut. Like, this this day will come, I think. I don't think we have this endless supply of rich people coming in and starting their brands and just throwing money at it. Well, Associate I, is, I is another so, brand so. that's kind of kind of doing I think like. But let's just let me let me explain. Associate is kind of doing it on the sly. They they we know that they moved out of their their building. They don't. They have. I think they've passed on all their warehouse work to a third party company. So they don't have a warehouse anymore. They have Rivkin, who does eight scale and 10 scale. They have Dustin Evans, who does 10 scale only. And they have Ungaro, who does eight scale. And if there's special event like Euros and Worlds, he'll do 10 scale. And then you have uh, Neil Craig, but he has a real job. I, I mean, he may be getting a small salary, travel help, but nothing serious. And that's about it. And they have... Yeah, they have good many good drivers that are 100% that yes. they get from yes. You know, they still have drivers that like have who? expenses, but like you on a heart on him, for example, okay, you, know. Guy, you know, he, he gets bonuses and travel and like he gets money from Associated and mm-hmm. he gets all, everything free. So it's costing them money to have him. And they have drivers like that. Like a Alex K, a Cole, Tallard. I mean, and they have... Um, yeah, that's like... Those, those What's his guys. name? The, the young kid uh, who done really well at the nationals, Champlin. Yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah, they, they, but, they sort of but a lot of people want to be an associated team. That too. Yeah, you know, but so associated is really maybe the best RC racing company now. You know, because they have such a rich history, long history, and they have such a wide range of products and they're still in the racing scene you know they're making money and the racing is sort of their marketing dude that element truck that they made oh they they cashed in that thing's so popular and they're making all these hop-ups for it they're on their own and most of the stuff is from cars that they have laying around they're they're it's genius associate i said it's genius that means you know i appreciate a, a element truck in the mail if you don't mind you aren't supposed to say that, but uh, I, no one's gonna listen to it from Associated. It doesn't matter. No one <laughs> listens to this podcast. No, they don't. Unfortunately, if they did, they would have known that uh, we talked about Savoya and Berton leaving two weeks ago. But thank you yeah. to the loyal people that do listen. I bet. But okay, all seven people. <laughs> it's more than seven people. So you're telling me seven people listen to the podcast? A hundred downloaded a hard. This podcast a hundred thousand times. That's just Russian bots. <laughs> we didn't even yeah we we we, we broke the one hundred k mark. Yeah, good job. One second. One second. Oh yeah, I'm sorry about that. My beer delivery for New Year's Eve showed up, so I had to go pay for it. Nice. You know, here in the DR, you can get everything delivered: beer, women. Whatever you want, they'll deliver it for you. Yeah, I wasn't going to go anywhere. I've actually been pretty 
crazy these last few days. I think you're so bummed up. Working until like five. I noticed. I saw that. It's, I saw this morning that you was last in line at nine thirty. That's that was five thirty your time. I know you turned yeah, into a vampire so, or something. I don't know. I just like when I have to do creative stuff. See, I just do it well at night. So when when it starts flowing, I just have to fucking you, keep on going. I'm the complete opposite. I'm actually better first thing in the morning. Like I like to when I edit this podcast or even when I do interviews, I like to do it in the morning. Yeah. But anyway. So anyway, I was I was going to say I haven't I wasn't planning on going anywhere, but Pagani invited me to a hockey game. Oh, nice. So we need to wrap, wrap this, this up. up. All right. Yeah. Anything else you want to add on silly season before we attack some of these questions? I don't know. We'll do a full. We should do a full analysis of what we think will change for the people. You know, like okay, let's say Savoy is confirmed out to TLR into Kiosha, and then we sort of analyze: is he going to do better or worse? What's going to change? I mean, we can let's, do that. Let's make some predictions. You know, then once everything's settled, so I you, think we covered the important stuff. I don't. Yeah, I, I don't, can't think right now. We have to kind of wait and see where the dust settles. We're still yeah. assuming a lot of things. Like one, we was wrong about Angaro. And we could be wrong about Savoya. I, I think Tyler Jones introduced, interests me a lot because I think he's very talented and it's going to be good to see what he does. Um, okay, so questions. Okay, let's get to some of these questions right here. All righty. A lot of them have to do with silly season. <laughs> All right. Maurice Belleville. I guess that the teams didn't want to ruin anyone's Christmas before letting them go. But in all earnestly, I think Affinity is making room for upcoming for the upcoming worlds. It needs more eight scale buggy drivers. Yeah, we agree with 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 that as well, Maurice. Charlie Max. What do you mean making room? I think they aren't making I don't think they're room. making room. I don't think they're like people say they're going out of business. I don't think that's happening. No, they're not going out of business. All right, something's up with my AC. I got to get the guy in there to check it. He's turning one on off by itself. Charlie Mack says, Cody Watson has been spotted at Disney World as he goes to J Concepts. Cody went to, got a Disney, Disney World trip for Christmas. So it's going to oh. be good. I'm excited to see what Hot Sauce can do in 2020. All right. Um... Brent Densford, where is Eclip going? I don't know. I actually saw a e Eclip did a did a, a Facebook Live the other day for the first time in a long time. Where is Eclip? I don't know. No idea. Sean Rusin, what's up, Sean? One of our biggest supporters. How much coal did Santa bring JQ? Happy holidays. And happy holidays to everybody. Sean's cool, man. Big supporter. How much what? Coal. Did Santa, it's a thing. Like, when you're a bad boy, Santa puts coal in your stocking. Oh. Adam Ross, up there in uh, Ontario. Out of the top mover and shakers, who will have, one, the best results, have the best customer support, two, be a benefit besides results to the actual company? You know what, Adam? We're going to cover that on the next podcast because we, we're going to do a silly season analysis, like a proper, when everybody makes their moves. Brad yeah. Maynard says, "What will any of it really matter? That's a good question. Will any of it really matter? Will they sell more kits by these guys moving to different cars, different companies? I don't know. Yeah, we'll, we'll cover it next next time. Uh, Taro Craddock, does RC have the capacity to, capacity to support full-time professional drivers anymore? We touched on that in this podcast. Right now, we are at an unsu unsustainable level. I could talk for days about what I think the industry is and you know what? doing at the moment. I'm not, just not hearing it, I'm not just hearing it from you. I'm hearing it from very many other people in the industry. Yes. I think that RC is big enough to support paid professional drivers, but at this point, not this many. And also, for it to truly make sense, the other things need to change in the industry too. You know, the you industry know, needs need, to change. Need, we, we, do, we don't only need professional drivers. We need everything to be professional at that point. You mm -hmm. know, the races, the media, coverage, promotion, all of that stuff, the federations. It should all be professional, and then, then it makes sense. As it is now, it's a great deal for the driver and not that good of a deal for anyone else. Right RC has some questions about 
the BE Nitro car and punching holes in tires. Bright, I'll go. We'll go over that in the next podcast because Joseph's going to watch a hockey game, and I gotta start New York New Year celebrations. So we'll definitely get to that in the next podcast. Lucas Livingston, who's going to TLR to take Reno and Tyler's spot? Any ideas? I don't think anybody's going to go there. I think they're going to rely on Fend, and that's it. And oh, I but we do like we TLR. Do. TLR are fending themselves. But we did hear something that somebody is going to TLR in Italy. Oh, yeah, Alex Sankatin. Yeah. So I heard that no more techno, which is interesting because now there'll be zero techno drivers in Europe. Well, England, so the UK one. has a big techno. No, they don't. Yeah, they do. They have a few. UK doesn't want to be Europe, okay? So <laughs> that's true. They're too. Brexit. They Brexit in themselves. They don't count as Europe anymore. They're just an island, hillbillies. Anyway, yeah, you're so there used to be one one techno driver in Europe, Alex Sankatin from Italy, used 2.7 sway bars front and rear on his TLR before. Crazy guy. He did really well with the TLR um, too. Yeah, he did well with the TLR. He's kind of been in a slump since. And now he's going back to TLR. That's what we hear. Okay. So ha he had this techno for a few years, and now he's back at TLR. I don't see anybody going to TLR in USA unless this whole Tasman thing actually happens, but I don't see that happening. I haven't heard any more rumors about that. Yeah, that would break the internet. They have been really quiet. I mean... No, well, he made, a, he made a video the other day. Oh, you know, also, they they have sort of been some rumors about Tessman and Proline also. Yeah. Maybe everything hasn't been that good with with uh, Tessman and Proline either. Well, if that's the case, then uh, Corey Drakenberg won't be able to put Tessman in his videos anymore. Finally. Fine. <laughs> did I say that out loud? Oh, sorry. You did. Um, I didn't mean to. Jorge Cuevas, will Infinity, will Infinity shift its focus to off-road after the recent and apparently unexpected on-road driver departures? We, we did cover that in the podcast. This is a big question everybody's asking, too. Who will, Jorge asked this, a second question, who will be the second driver at JQ during the 2020 RCGP Championship? Yeah, at this point, it looks like it's a one-man team, to be honest. I think I'm going to come out of retirement. I can professionally hack people. You can? Yeah. Just take people out, man. Not even intentionally. Just take them out. Let you win. You'll probably still mess that up somehow, someday. I could take everybody out and you'll still lose. You'll take yourself out. And then I'll win. <laughs> By the way, this is like... Uh these coming two years, it's it's going to be my last hurrah. Just like to announce it on this podcast, but I've kind of made plans for a bit of a comeback. You know, I think with you out there in California, and California surrounded by RC and, and going to OCRC and going to the track and practicing with Drake and Cavalier, it, it really, you didn't do that last year and it showed. You did it the but year before I, and it was really not, good. I know I'm sort of always joking and stuff but i'm not even kidding <laughs> i'm serious about this I, this this is my last hurrah i'm serious and single i'm not ready to mingle i'm all about sitting in a field and being a nerd so you re-virginized yourself and I'm, you're ready i'm def i'm definitely re-virginizing myself i'm getting ready for two years of non-stop rc and i just want a great personal result that I can look back on and think, I fucking did it. That's what I want. You know, I, all this work and shit, like, yeah, it's time. Like, there's enough going on now to where I have enough money coming in to, to where, look, I need to do what I set out to do, what I wanted to do. So, yeah. This so that's your time. New Year's resolution. It's now or never. That's your New Year's resolution. Now or never. It's now or never. Okay. I'm going to you know do what? the best I can. And I think see, you're going to be, I is. think we'll, we'll see at DNC. I think you're going to do a lot better this year at DNC than you did last year. Oh, I think so too. Um, 
Sean Alcorn, who was on the Techno RC Grassroots Racer spe- uh, Spotlight last podcast, why don't RC companies quit sponsoring every Tom, Dick, and Harry and just focus on pro level? I get the business part. They have contracted customers, but seriously, handing contracts out like candy at Halloween is getting out of hand. Well, you know what? I'm going to answer that. I really freaking well wish that every hobby shop in America or in the world would carry JQ ready to run cars, but that just doesn't happen. So in order for me or us to get people to run our cars, and I was very, very more selective this year. I kind of really grilled people. I found out where they were from. I actually even, I, I, I just wanted people that I knew that were probably going to fit in properly with what we have. I didn't want people who were going to get on the team and then, Six months down the line, well, JQ pissed me off because he's he's he hates America, you know, which has happened or whatever. So, <laughs> you know, I I don't know, man. Um, you don't say that's happened. Yeah, of course. You've pissed off a lot of people. So I get what he's saying. I get what he's saying. I don't I don't look at people that drive our cars as contract customers. I put a lot of effort and passion into the people that join join and use our products. That's why when somebody leaves, it drains a lot out of me. And I've, I've told you this over and over. I don't know how much, I don't know how much, how much passion and, and drive I have with that because I, I put a lot of effort into people and, and it does, it really, it really, I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm a, a punk or whatever, but I feel in order to be good at my job, I have to actually care about people. Um, That's why I can't do it. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But I care about people. Of course you care about people. <laughs> But I get it. I understand. Like I've, I'm starting my my heart's starting to get a little bit more stone. Like you know, I'm starting to be like, oh okay, see you later. You know, and it's yeah, not man. it's not that I yeah. want to be like that, but I just can't let every I can't let it take me down. Like I, I man, it it was getting depressing at some point. But back to it. Um, yeah, you needed some therapy at one point. Yeah, I still kind of do need a little bit of therapy. This podcast gives me therapy. Um, it gives me hope. There's still good people. Um, I don't think we're ever going to see this stop. You know why? Until RC grows, things are going to stay the same. I, and, I, and people think I'm joking. As long as we keep bragging about how many entries that we have in RC instead of actually saying how many actual participants there are at a race, and as long as we judge a or race... Caring, uh, caring about how many... And, or or judging the quality of a race by the number of fucking entries that we get... RC will never change and this whole sponsorship stuff will never change because RC will continue to be small and in order for the con- for this to stop like I would love for people to buy JQ cars retail I'm sure HB and all these hobby shops would love people to come in and buy HB cars retail but as long as people want deals and there is absolutely nothing wrong with wanting a deal but I believe with a deal comes certain responsibilities so, until I honestly think that the amount of cars that we sell direct or our dealers sell direct at retail is sad. Oh, it's it is really sad. It is. It's it's very very few. It is very very few. And what are, like what are we like? I've been over this before. What are we supposed to do? Just sit around and wait for everybody to to pay retail for a car? No, we're a business. Yeah. We have to it's survive. Like if, if, when someone buys. <laughs> when someone goes in the JQ web shop and buys a car at retail, I'm almost like, is this guy all right? Like, is there something wrong with this guy? Like, we send them, like, free pit mats and shirts and shit. Like, I, I think, we just had, like, it's it's an, it's an event. Yeah. You know, oh, we had a retail customer. It's, like, a, it's, it's surprising. You know? Oh, my God. And we just send them shit. I, like, as a you thank know, you. In, in, a, in an ideal world, I would love people to buy a a JQ car retail or even buy one used, try it out for a little bit, then ask to be on the team. But that's not how it works. I've had people do that. And that's the real way to do it. And, but you know, I, we we're we we're in the business of selling cars, but also in the business of being a race team. So if we don't sell cars, we can't be a race team. So we have to sell cars. Let's put it this way. Some some people are like, well, fuck, you're just part of the problem. You're, yeah, don't hate the player, hate the game. We didn't invent the I game. I think that J, JQ Racing is doing a lot more good for the RC industry too. Like, I care about this industry. I want it to grow. That's why I started uh, RCGP, you know, because I think RCGP can help 
That's why I, I did that. That's why I support supported you, still support you, and pushed you to start this podcast, because I think this can help the RC industry. There's a lot that we do that can, can support and help the industry. That's why I'm doing the guide. An updated guide is going to be released next year. And again, it's because I think it can help people. So how can it help people? Well, people get into racing, they get in, interested, they have issues, they need help, they need support. You know, there's some place to go and look. And also people sort of get a bit burned out. They can learn more. They read the guide, they learn all about car setup and stuff. Oh, I can do all of these things. You know, maybe it inspires people to try new things. You know, there's many different ways that a guide like that could could help get people more involved or more interested or keep them interested you know so it's it's not just do you just sponsor drivers do you give discounts to people it's also what else do you do in the industry Mm -hmm. to help it you know some brands like x-ray they have the xrs series you know they they organize these sort of almost like a club race series i guess you know and a lot of new people go there you know it's easy access it's 10 scale Electric, you know, that's really good. X-ray are doing good things for the industry, mm-hmm. you know. So and, and I think even all, pe- all companies need to do that. It's not just about like how many. Team Another great you example have. is okay, J Concepts. Do some. They have their, else their INS series, which is popular and gets people racing as well. So there are companies doing things. I don't. When somebody joins JQ Racing, I don't feel as they're a contract. Co- this person can contact me at 11 o'clock at night and talk to me for a few minutes. I need to kind of get away from that because, one, I have, I'm have i going to say my New Year's resolutions when we finish. But anyway, um, yeah. I, I And I think the group of people that we have that run these, man, I see guys that literally stop what they're doing, rather be online, rather be at a race, to help any other driver. Now, if they're busy, it's a little bit different. But I see, like, when somebody asks a question, man, they get 50 different answers. And that's why I like what we have, and I believe in what we have. And I'm not saying that other companies aren't like that, but I don't look at people as contracted customers. And I get what you're saying, Sean. Like, yeah, I really want people to buy retail, but buying retail now or non-sponsored is the abnormal thing in RC. So yeah, I don't think it's going anywhere, man. And if you want to complain about that, and then the hobby shops will complain about that, but they also need to complain about conglomerates like A-Main that distribute and sell to everybody. And Absolute's one of them too, you know? I try to support hobby shops. Beach RC is a perfect example. I say this and I keep I keep tooting Beach RC's one because I like Brent and I like what he's doing. Beach RC is an actual shop with an actual badass track that probably should get more use and more big races than they should. And... He has a great online presence. And Brent puts a lot of money into races. He sponsors a lot of races. He sponsored the Nationals two years ago. He sponsors a lot of races locally. He sends his trailer out to races uh, in the Carolinas and all the, and whatever to support people. Yes, yes, he has to make money and he has to cover his, his cost. But I think he's doing a lot of things. He's not just someplace that's shipping things out of a warehouse, you know, and I, if you get what I'm saying, he's like what a hobby shop is supposed to be, in my opinion. Yeah, he's supporting the industry, not just selling stuff cheap. Yeah. Um. All right, a few more questions here, and then I want to say our New Year's resolutions, and then you can go watch hockey, and it's going to be time. How about one more question? Uh, we do have a few. Most of them are, are mostly about TLR, and we cover that. Um, yeah, Brandon so Holmes, best question. Brandon Holmes, this is a great question, question, and I agree with him. Why do RC companies and racers keep them leaving such a secret? In other forms of racing, they talk about about it well before their contract year is up. Why be secretive? Well, you know what, Brandon? I think we should know the wages, and it should be public knowledge of every one of these pro drivers, just like it is in other pro sports. And I think it makes it exciting. But it comes back to my hill. We're nerds in the field, and we look like, in black hoodies, look like we're part of a satanic cult. We want to keep everything so quiet. We keep it to ourselves. I used to say dog fight, and now I just call it a satanic cult. Um, yeah. <laughs> I actually would like to see that. I want to know. I have an idea what these guys make, but I want to know. Like, I want people to know. I think it should be. Yeah, it would be cool, actually, if all that was public. I think it should be pro- common knowledge. 
it's it's and all other for the manufacturers. All other professional sports have it. So, you know, like fuck, um, such and such went. Let's, this person went to this baseball team and signed a three hundred million dollar contract. Yeah, maybe I should make that my mission. Yeah. <laughs> make it all public. <laughs> Matt Badcop, who's JQ signing to replace our boy Max? No, we have already covered this. Nobody. Okay. We're done with questions. Okay, Can Jeff Werner. No, he, Jeff Werner. We covered this with the current economy of RC world. Are paid drivers actually a positive expense for companies? Hey, Keenan, don't make me put you on timeout again. Oh yeah, I forgot. Joseph blocked me this weekend on Facebook. He actually unfriended me, you dumbass. And then oh, I, I said, oh, "No, you, you did." When I and then me. I sent you an eye message and said, "You didn't block me here, bitch." Yeah, that was the wrong phone, though. Bitch. <laughs> I didn't see it. So I, I blocked Keenan for like I blocked him for like twelve hours, 12, 12 hours basically. If he's getting on my nerves, I give you one strike, one strike, one warning. Because I tell him the truth. I tell no, him the truth. If I get like, if if I start getting like messages at a rate of. Let's he doesn't like when I tell him the five truth. Five messages in ten seconds. Because I'm pissed then off. That, then you're blocked. Then you're done. Then, because then I'm, I'm telling like, him this is not gonna go. No, but it's not it's gonna true. go anywhere. It's so because you, you don't just don't want to hurt. On, on, don't I'm me messing you with on your podcast. I'm messing podcast you with timeout. No, no, I'm messing with your high, your endorphins. That's what it is, and that hey, just like. Just like a drug addict, man. Man, I start messing with that. Don't and tell make you the me truth. Put you on. You get all timeout. shaky. Get all nervous. Start scratching. All fidgety. Listen. I'm putting you on timeout. I don't want to hear what you have to say. Anyway, enough about that. Thank you guys for the question. New Year resolutions. We will cover some more questions. What are your New Year's resolutions, Joseph? Going into 2020. My my resolution was what I said. So okay. I, I now it's time to do what I set out to do. Okay. Now you know what. Fuck everybody else. I want some results. I want to do that shit. Yeah, but you have some you, kids. You have some people that... I get what you're saying, but you also have to put some time into some of your drivers, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. See? And I you say know that, what yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. You know what I mean. It's now or never. So. <laughs> it's the last... The last hurrah. The last hurrah. Yeah. What do you... Uh, all right. My New Year's resolution... I have one for you. I would like you to stop trying to be as much of an asshole, just a little bit. Yeah, I'm not trying. You should see me try. That would be. Cool. I know. I want you to try to stop being one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like you know, maybe just turn the asshole meter on a, a scotch, a hair. You know, it would make a big yeah. difference. I think it would be good for everybody. Um, I also would like to see you put more time. I, you know, I'm. I have a resolution for you too. Can we stop one word text messages, please? No. Yeah, if, you know, we if, have a group. We have a group, like a rep. Then group. just ask questions that no, are, listen. can't be answered with one word. Like, why should I write many words when Dude, I can just say somebody yes can write you a no. paragraph oh, okay. and you just go, I don't know. Okay, yes. That's more than one word. Yes. You know, we have a reps group on WhatsApp and all of them say the same thing. Why doesn't this jackass type more than one word answers every person that says on there says the same thing so that's something you then should you work are, if if i let's put it like this if i'm typing one word answers then i'm not really engaged and interested in what's going on <sighs> anyway my new year's resolutions are i i definitely need to lose some weight i'm getting older i'm 42 put on a lot of weight i gotta take it easy on on the beer not stopping and the milkshakes uh, yeah or, you know, unicorn poop and all that stuff and Just take it easy. Don't eat so much and don't drink sodas and milkshakes. Like I don't drink milkshakes. Less, less no, eat, I'm going to get don't active. Don't eat that much. Don't eat as often. Don't eat late at night. Don't drink sodas. I know what don't I need to do. a gallon milkshake and move a bit. That's I know I need to move. Huge difference. I know, Joseph. I know what I have to do. I've done it before. I've just been lazy. I've been lazy. That's it. And you know what? Yeah. I will be honest with you. Stress. It may sound crazy, but stress. It's not an excuse. It's just telling you how it is. Yeah. My second New Year's resolution is, man, I am going to do some more RC-related racing and stuff in 2020. I look just back. have one resolution. Just no, no, because just this is something. That one. No, because this is something that I need. I look. I did not race. I did not drive an eight-scale car all year this year. I the only car that I actually even raced and drove was a short course truck that Mike Norris. 
prepared for me in Albuquerque when Mike and I stopped there and I raced it um, at RC Riot's off for a track there. That's the only car I really drove. Yeah. So I, you need to build me a car for DNC, number one. I want a fully decked out with all the custom parts. You already sold my car. So get me another one. I want all the new parts on it. I want an ultimate engine, new servers, no jet. And you owe me a starter box because you burnt mine up. And I have my radio there. That was your janky, third world janky life on both fronts. Hey, I have two radios in the van. One is my 4PX that I need to come back because that's going to go for my crawlers. And I have a 12S in a box. Don't sell that stuff, please. So I want a car ready to rip DNC. Okay, deal. All right. Anyway, guys, thank you guys for listening. It's supposed to be a short podcast, but it's an hour and 20 minutes. I know we cursed a lot, but eh, emotions are high. It's New Year's Eve. Have a good New Year's. We, I think we're going to have a really big guest for the first official podcast of the year. Really big one. I heard I set it up. Yeah, you need to finish setting it up too, by the way. Okay. Um, hey. You guys, happy new year. 2020 is a good year. I don't care what car you race, what class you race. Have fun. Treat everybody good. Talk shit to your friends. Drink beer. Have fun. Help somebody out. Whatever, man. Just, we need to grow our hobby and all of us need to do it. Our hobby slash sport. All of us are responsible for that. There is no wrong way to grow our industry. We have to do everything to make it better. Don't shit on other people's ideas. Just... Fuck, we need to do it. Like, we need to do it. Everybody is responsible. And, oh, yeah. Can we make a resolution? I see a great future here. Next two years is going to be good. Just yeah, I'm really excited for the podcast. Um, I'm really excited. We've got some. We, I think we're going to be launching this new thing here in the first two podcasts. Maybe the first one we'll do it. Maybe we might have to do two podcasts a week, I think. No, just don't get ahead of yourself. No, we just might have to keep do doing two. one. We don't have to do two. Maybe one, just a a short one. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, Nitrous to Glory, E-Buggy pays the bills. Guys, have a good new year. Happy 2020. Let's make 2020 the year of RC for everybody. Next year, Keenan's going to, Joe Rogan's going to pay my bills. That would be great. Oh, and if you think, oh, so, I always got to say it. Thank you to all our patrons. Thank you to all of our Supporters around the world that support the podcast. Thank you to all of our awesome sponsors. And if you think, if you are a company that thinks this is a great platform for advertising, hit me up. Joseph, you have anything to say? Goodbye. Good. Hey, have fun at the hockey game. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. I'll try. Thank you for listening to the No Name RC Podcast. Please tune in next time for more fresh RC content. And if you can, please also support us on patreon.com forward slash the Quay Grain. We will greatly appreciate it. And don't forget, Nitro is the glory.